Zach Laws of Gold Derby here with Jonathan Majors. He's one of the stars of The Last Black Man in San Francisco, and he's just been nominated for an Independent Spirit Award for his role in the film. Jonathan, first of all, congratulations on that, and congratulations on your Gotham nomination for Breakthrough Performer. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, getting the news that you had uh, gotten these major nominations. Were you surprised, shocked? Uh, <laughs> what was your reaction? Mm, yeah, man. I think, uh, when I got the... The, so the Gotham nomination news came first, and it was uh, it's always a weird time, you know. Like uh, uh, I was a I was at coffee, and a uh, friend called me and told me I freaked out, and I was like, "Holy smokes!" And I'm in this market, just you know, woo, screaming and stuff, and um, you know, hell yeah, hell yeah. And then the Independent Spirit uh, nomination. Uh, which is literally we were saying before the interview was uh, shit 24 hours ago, and I was actually um, at an IV place getting <laughs> for the first time getting um, uh, like a hydration IV uh, because I didn't have enough time to go to the uh, sauna. Mm. And so I thought this would be a good alternative, except for the fact that I find out about the Independent Spirit Award nomination with a needle in my arm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like I can't really holler and scream because it's, you know, it's got to be like a little thing. So, uh, but it was great, man. It's, um, and one, and one thing, you know, breakout, you know, for this film is, is incredible because the film is a bunch of family. It's a whole family that made it, you know, and, um, I just felt so, um, uh, on and move to be uh to be a part of it, you know, uh, be selected to, to play an integral part in the, uh, you know, in the, in the story we were telling, and then that was incredible. You know, the the Gotham uh, nomination was incredible uh, for that, and then yesterday, you know, supporting actor, you know, that that has a certain amount of uh, it's a different type of thing. You know, you're in there with a different group of uh, uh, fellows. You know, in this case, it's mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're selected by gender, and it just seems a bit more like a, it's a different thing. You know, one is um, one is like purple and gold laced, and one is uh, like deep green and and red. One's like Christmas, you know. Like, I guess like deep green and red. I guess um, but both both a huge honor. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to you know just I'm gonna, I I hope that just brings more attention to the film. You know, because uh, it's it's incredible. Well, the the movie has gotten such great buzz ever since it premiered at Sundance, and uh, you know, I'm, it is not just a, a breakthrough for you, but I mean, obviously, it's a breakthrough for the director Joe Talbot and the uh, uh, writer and star uh, Jimmy Fails. Talk a little bit about just how you got uh, involved with these guys and uh, what made you want to be a part of this movie. Um, how I how, how we met was. Um... You know, it was really old fashioned the way the whole thing went down. You know, you get you get a script. Um, the way my team kind of operates is, you know, I, I don't get many scripts unless, uh, you know, we say go time. You know, unless it's like mm -hmm. we're gonna try and go and get this. And you know, I could tell they were very excited about it. Um, and uh, when it got to me, you know, I just sat and read it, and um, you know, it it touched me. The story did deeply, and. and so I went after it, and uh, that's you know you take the audition. I taped it with my uh, my girlfriend at the time, and she's giving me notes, and 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 I'm 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 fighting the notes. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. No, 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 yeah, 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 let's go with that, let's go with that. No, I got it, I got, it, I got, it, I got. It. That's easy. I got, it. I got, it, I got, it, I got it. You could ask. Yeah. I got it. Okay, I got it, I got it. I got it. <laughs> you know, uh, it's very like very. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got it, I got it, I got it. Let's go. Um, and. Um, and we shot it, you know, and then I sent it out. And the next thing that happened was they called and they said, you know, we really like the tape. Here, here's some more adjustments. I'm like, okay, adjustments are good. Adjustments are good. Mm -hmm. And um, I took the adjustments and sent another tape. And then that tape was received, um, was also received well. And then they asked me to come out to San Francisco and meet the fellas, uh, Joey and Jimmy. Uh, and Rick, uh, Rick, uh, Rick, uh, Rich, Rick, and um, Rob. Fuck me, Rob. Why you <laughs> my prop master, Rick's my prop master on the job. Rob, 
um, uh, Rob, sweet Rob, um, and um, and kind of and kind of and kind of you know uh, audition again, you know, and, and do it again, and that's where it got different. You know, it's easy to test. I mean, easy it's easy to uh, audition, um, call back, test. That's simple. You know, um, that's fortunate. You know, but this was a, a read call back. If I felt like I was like, okay, it's gonna be this gonna be a chemistry test, um, but it ended up being a, an entire um, like, can you can you help us? It's kind of what it was like 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 do you have do you have what it is we need to complete this project? You know, it wasn't a matter of uh, you know who the best actor was for the role. I, I don't really think that. I, it's more like, do you are you a part of this family? You know, and it felt like they were searching for that. And um, I felt that in the audition. Um, we just didn't feel like an audition at all. We walked at first, and uh, we talked a lot, talked about all, all types of shit. You know, gentrification was a new, um, not a new concept for me, but I had not, I'm a nomad myself, so I'm always moving, you know. Um, a Texan, you know, uh, Texan raised, but, you know, I lived in a suburb, you know, and then I lived in, you know, like the, the projects, and then we lived. And I spent a lot of time in the country, and then we were back in the suburbs. And you know what I'm saying? So it was like, mm -hmm. like I was, I was moving. So I never, I know my state, I know my town, I know Dallas, but I didn't know what it was to live in a place where it's completely changed. I got a taste of that, you know, when I left school and um, for the for the second time, and it was up in Harlem. And I could tell how things were changing, but the radicalization of of uh, San Francisco was crazy and so we talked a lot about that and um you know the the impact of that and from that finally you know we finally jump into the script um after i think like an hour and a half walk uh just felt just the you know jays you know joey john jimmy and uh and we got after it and and they taped the whole thing and it was the uh we did the entire fucking movie uh we did the whole movie we did the whole mm -hmm. movie um i got there at like um i got there in the morning after a crazy night and um i left that i left that evening late that evening um uh rob <laughs> <laughs> rob drove me to the airport um and i got and we got a full crash course i mean it, it'd be like auditioning for a film on a lot and then the director taking you to the lot, right? And mm -hmm. saying, this is where you shoot this, and this is where this happened, this is where this happened, because he took me to the house. And um, I got to the house, and I saw it, and he, he literally said to me, this is where you do the play. This is where the play happens. And I'm looking at this man, first off, like, you son of a bitch. You know, <laughs> if I, if I don't get this rope. You know, my heart's, my heart's wide open, and so my heart's mm -hmm. broken. Man, if this don't work out for me, if this don't work out for us, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be sick, man. It's about a heartache, you know? Um, uh, but ultimately, it did, you know. But not right, right, not not right then. Like, I went to dinner with the producers and and the writers and some of the creative guys, and uh, after we saw the house, and then um, I remember I was walking through Bryant Park, and I was told earlier that day that Joey wanted to chat with me, and I was like, okay, all right, cool, you know. Um, and he called me, and it was cold, and we were walk. I was walking around. And we were just chatting, you know, it was kind of like we were walking like as if we walked when we were together, you know, and I just kind of walked, walked with him, you know, on the phone. And he asked me a few questions, you know, um, and then ultimately he said, uh, you know, I'd like you to play the role. I'd like you to come in. I'd like you to do it with us. And um, I didn't really feel like you got the role. I felt like you were invited. You know, I was invited to, to be a part of the, a part of the family. And... Um, that kind of set the tone for everything. Uh, after that. I, I think what's so touching about the movie uh, and about your relationship with uh, Jimmy, both the character and the actor, um, you know, you guys really are outsiders in this, uh, in this town that you grew up in, you know, I yeah. mean, you, 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 you don't dress the way that the weather is dictating you should dress. Um, you know? <laughs> um, like, I mean, talk a little bit about just like the relationship between these two guys. So Joey, uh, Joey was very clear, you know, early on about who, who um, at the time Montgomery Allen was named Prentice. 
and he was very clear about who Prentice uh, wasn't, you know, and he had the benefit of seeing Phyllis take stabs at it and, and you know, saying, yeah, that, but not that, you know, that blue, but not that hue of blue, et cetera, you know, so he's very clear about that. Um, and so I was, I was, I was in some ways coming in just with my, my take on it, um, after a few conversations, you know, my take on it. Um, and then you had Jimmy, right, who was this, I mean, it's so strange, right, the meta of it, because Jimmy is Jimmy, right, like Jimmy, Jimmy Fett is Jimmy Fett, right? But, but I remember talking to Jimmy and being like, because that was a part of our relationship, too, that we got very close in, as far as the the crafting of it, you know, uh, the three of us. But particularly, uh, Jimmy and I had to work on how, how we how we how we told the story, you know, about what 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 the friendship was, you know. Um, and so from that, you know, for me, it became very clear that these were two marginalized individuals within a marginalized uh, community. And so they were the outsiders to the outsiders and in that way came together um, and stayed together. Um, and so, yeah, they're both extremely uh, idiosyncratic, you know, and um, there's something quite uh, natural about them. You know, they're, they're more like animals than men, you know, in a way where it's like you have um, maybe like a panda bear and a grizzly bear, you know, being friends. Like they, they look the same. They have the same uh, appendages, etc. In this case, they're both the same gender, uh, but they just think and move differently. However, they're bears. You know, they're bears, and that's how they kind of operate. This is a very strange way of answering the question, but, but, but yeah, I mean, that's that's uh, that was my take on it. You know, how how what connected these two? You know, and to me, it was the attachment. Mom's biggest attachment in the film. You know, what he cares about most. You know, a few things. Grandpa being one, um, and. Uh, you know his his personal things, his fishing, his um, drawings, his art, his theater making, um, and Jimmy, and and just connecting to those things kind of allowed my my shit to kind of develop and move. And I know Jimmy was, I don't know all of Jimmy's process, but I know a lot of Jimmy's process was. Um, just really staying honest and really staying connected to the things that made him him, you know, um, and letting that come forward. Yeah. I mean, you talk about the things that Monty cares about, just, you know, his art and, you know, the people in his life. And it, it strikes me watching the film, how much Monty wants to take care of the people in his life, you know, I mean, taking care of his grandfather and, and, and taking care of Jimmy and trying to, you know, do the things that are best for them. I mean, was that something that you, uh, was that an aspect of the character you saw in there? Um, I mean, that's the beautiful thing of the script. You know, you are, you are who you're with, you know, um, you are who you're with. And when you're with your grandpa and you live with your grandpa, you know, simply put, you don't want them to, you don't want anybody you love. That's that. That I guess that's the ticket with Mont, where it's like his heart, his empathy, right? His curiosity, right? Because it has to be about you and other things. It can't just be about other things. That's not. It's not really honest. But mm-hmm. he has a deep hunger for it. He himself wants to know things. Wants to understand things on a uh, visceral and emotional level. You know. Um, as well as intellectual, but 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 my way in was viscerally and emotionally, and to connect to something uh, takes a great deal of care and takes a great deal of um, uh, um, steadfastness, you know, and devotion to know something. You understand what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. can you can you can think you know something, but I mean, we've all had relationships where like, oh no, you didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just did not know that. You know. Primarily, you know, if it's my case, it's like, well, you weren't paying attention. Well, what I hear is you weren't paying attention, man. And I'm like, okay, I guess I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? But from that life experience, Ma pays attention. 
you know, mm-hmm. he is, you know, biologically connected to his grandpa. You know what I'm saying? There's the work of that, you know, where is mom? You know, and if anyone who watches the film or anyone knows me personally, they'll see that there's actually a, a portrait of my mother um, who I cast as Mont's mother uh, drawn on the side of the bed on the wall, you know, but she's not present. So where is she? You know, um, so there's all that, all that, all that backstory, you know, that connects him to the grandson, the grandson, the grandson, but, but particularly to uh, this situation with this grandpa, you know what I'm saying? This grandson, the grandpa, you know, and um, he's just curious, you know, he's just curious about what it is because, because he's going to become that, correct? Mm-hmm. You know, biologically, he will become Danny Glover if I'm lucky. When I get old, I will become Danny Glover. Then <laughs> 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 Mott, when he gets older, will become um, uh, uh, Grandpa. I guess all roads lead to Danny Glover. If yeah. <laughs> you know? um, so that's who, that, in a way, that's who he'll become. And then who he is, you are, you know, again, you are who you're with. Um, they help you define who you are. And so how close he is to Jimmy, you know, that's his, that's his closest companion. That's his closest mirror. Where he can find things out about himself and about him, you know. Uh, same thing with the goons, you know, is what we call them. You know? um, Kofi and, and all and all and all the rest of. Them. Mm-hmm. Uh, how we doing? Is that all right? You understand? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Kofi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, b- before I let you go, and uh, one of the things that. Um, uh, so often in movies, I, I find myself wondering what happens to uh, the characters, and especially at the end of the, this movie, I wondered where Monty's life was going to lead to. You know, right. uh, have you given any thought to that? I mean, uh, where do you think Monty ends up at the end of this, or past the end of this? Well, I mean, that's the beauty of of you know of acting in some ways and, and storytelling. You you want to craft something that has no beginning and has no end. You know. Um, and the medium is what captures it. You understand? Like the movie starts with us sitting at the at the at the bus stop, but mm-hmm. everybody knows these men have to walk to the bus stop. Everyone knows they have to wake up. Everyone knows they have to be born, right? So that part you should be taken care of. And sometimes exposition can help us with that. Um, but what happens after, you know, is I think he, I believe, I like to believe actually that he holds it steady. You know. Um, that he continues to give uh, of himself to his community, you know, um, and that he does have to find a way to fill up, you know, I mean, because that's his, I mean, I get, I get, um, it gets me now even thinking about it, that's his best friend, you know, mm-hmm. um, and so something has changed, right? Like, that's the beauty of the film, that everyone is forever changed after this event, right? So. Mm-hmm. I like to think that Mont continues to live in San Francisco, you know, and 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 lives amongst, you know, the gentrification that happens. And as we see when he walks up on, um, you know, the homies in the street, Mont, Mont, Mont is not a fearful being, you know. And so whether he's outnumbered by the, by the guys on the street or he's outnumbered by tech or he's outnumbered by the, you know, four-eyed, six-eyed fish, you know, mm-hmm. and continue to give up himself and continue to learn because ultimately he's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to uh, transcend, you know, this level, this plane of being, you know, and, and bring everything up, you know, to, um, um, to a sense of beauty and a sense of like clear understanding, you know. Um, and as we discussed earlier, I mean, he turns into Danny Glover. So yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 be okay. <laughs> he's, fine. he's great. I mean, he's set. Good. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's that's my take on it, bro. Mm-hmm. Well, Jonathan Majors, congratulations on the film. Congratulations on your nominations. I wish you the best of luck uh, with this uh, with this film. Go fight Thank him. you so much. Go fight him. <laughs> Go fight him, pickles. <laughs> and All right. right.